is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, we have my Hell in a Cell 2019 predictions for you guys. Yes, we have a freaking pay-per-view tomorrow night. Doesn't really feel like it, you know, with AEW on Wednesday and NXT and freaking Friday Night Smackdown going to Fox. You know, it was the big premiere last night. Everybody hyped about that. And I think WWE even forgot there was a pay-per-view on Sunday because we only have three matches. Yes, you heard that correct. Three matches announced for this card. Now that is three, and I, I, you want to take it a step further? Every person you see in this frame right here is the only people with matches. The rest, the, this is the full card right here that you're seeing in front of you. As of right now that you're seeing this video, these are only three matches announced for this show, and I really don't know what to do, guys. I tried to delay the predictions video because I knew on Wednesday, you know, there's only three matches announced. I was like, ah, yeah, you know, they'll probably announce another one tomorrow, or you know how they do on Instagram, they'll plug in a Cruiserweight title match or a tag team match or a number one contender at least for SmackDown. I was like, you know what, we'll build some more on SmackDown, and there is a couple more matches you might could add based off of what happened on Fox last night with SmackDown Live or SmackDown. I gotta get SmackDown Live out of my head. I'm kind of glad they dropped the live dish there at the end, but these are literally three matches, guys. We have two Hell in a Cell matches, and then we have a tag team match announced, and I thought they were gonna plug in more matches. I literally put this, this predictions video off and off and off, and you know, we usually do it on Wednesday of a uh, the week of a pay-per-view. We usually do our setup on Thursday, and then we typically do our predictions on the Wednesday leading up to a pay-per-view, but we couldn't do that with this show because there was only three matches announced. Well, hell, here the hell we are, and we still only have three matches announced. So I guess what I'm going to do is just cover these matches and then throw in some matches that maybe could be taking place at the show, given, you know, what happened on Sunday or Friday, I should say, and, you know, what just what I could see happening maybe, possibly. I don't know what to tell you guys. If they do add more matches, I will pin a comment at the top of the comment section below, and you guys will see what my predictions are for the matches they announced furthermore. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into Hell in a Cell. You know, I'm looking forward to the Fiend versus Seth, and I'm looking forward to Becky and Sasha. The tag team match, I guess, you know, maybe they'll give us a good matchup, but outside of that, you know, that, I mean, that's the full show right there, so I mean, it is what it is. With that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into this card, or this one-third of a card, whatever the hell you want to say. Let's get it. So getting into our first match, guys, we have the tag team match between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan taking on Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Luke Harper returned to join forces with Eric Rowan, which I really love. I'm very excited to see Luke Harper back on our televisions and everything. This all stems from the Eric Rowan and Daniel Bryan tag team that we had for a while as, you know, the Planet's Champion and tying into Roman Reigns, who attacked Roman Reigns. And, you know, it's pretty nice to see this coming forth here. Uh, I'm not very invested in this match, but I am very happy to see Luke Harper back, and hopefully we get a good tag team match out of it, and this match will be pretty solid, but I do think that we're going to see the end of this feud here. Hopefully, maybe we'll get a Daniel Bryan turn on Roman Reigns, and we'll build on that feud going into the future. Maybe Daniel Bryan turns back heel or something of that nature, and I know the Usos are supposed to return, so maybe the Usos return and something. I'm, I'm not sure where they're going with this, but I do think that Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan are going to get the victory, so I'm going to go with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan to win, and uh, hopefully, you know, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan don't lose here. They have been booked pretty good, though, you know, so maybe they'll get a dub. I don't know. I'm just going to roll with the faces and go with Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. Next up, guys, is the Raw Women's Championship match between Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch in a Hell in a Cell match. Looking forward to this one a lot. You guys know that we started off the Women's Hell in a Cell matches with Charlotte and Sasha Banks a few years back, and now here she is in another one with Becky Lynch, and I'm looking forward to this one, and I think that it's time, guys. I think we are going to see a title change here. I think that Raw is going to be dropping the Women's Championship off to Sasha Banks coming into this draft that's going to take place next Friday. I think we are going to see a change here. I think that Becky Lynch is going to get drafted over to SmackDown, and Sasha Banks will be the Raw Women's Champion going into Raw, and they are going to go their separate ways here, and I think Sasha Banks, since Becky already beat Sasha once, I think that she is going to beat her here. I think that they're going to put it on the boss, and she's going to take the Raw Women's Championship away, especially with this draft coming up. I think that's where my thinking's at. Becky Lynch goes her separate way over to SmackDown, going back to where she made her career known, and Sasha Banks separates herself and goes over to Raw. That is what I'm thinking here, and I think that is what is best, and I think that's what they're thinking so that is what I'm going to predict here. Becky Lynch will drop her championship. I'm just expecting a really good matchup between these ladies, and I hope it delivers. And I'm, I'm going for Becky, I guess, but I, I think Sasha's going to win. 
Well, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We are already at our main event. The Fiend taking on my man Seth Rollins right here for the Universal Championship. And this one, you know, this one's been building up a while. You guys know that the Fiend character was unleashed. He defeated Finn Balor. He's been taking out legends left and right. Uh, Jerry the King Lawler, Kane, Kurt Angle, just been taking out kids. And now he is in line. He's been attacking Seth Rollins so many weeks in a row now. And, you know, I feel like they've kind of overexposed the Fiend. I hate that they've, you know, overexposed him to like three or four weeks in a row on television. I hate that. I wish they would keep it special. Special. You guys know how, kind of like they do the Demon Finn Balor, you know, they keep it special. I wish they would do that here with The Fiend, but I can understand it, you know, I see what it is, whatever. Uh, I am happy that he's getting this championship match right here, and I think my man Seth Rollins is going to be in the same exact boat as his fiance Becky Lynch here, and I think they're going to drop the Universal Championship over to The Fiend, and then Seth Rollins will be drafted over to SmackDown. You know, I don't think they're going to separate Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins in real life. I think that, you know, their real life selves are going to go together on to SmackDown without any championships and try to build themselves up over there. Maybe Seth Rollins can contend again with the WWE Championship. Maybe Becky Lynch can get in and try to take out Bayley or Charlotte, whoever takes over that championship. And I think that Seth Rollins should go over to the blue brand. You know, he's never been exclusively to SmackDown, so I think that would be best for him. It's time to get him away from Monday. I, I know it sucks Monday Night Rollins is coming to an end here, but uh, I think he needs a character refreshment. He needs to go over to SmackDown Live. I keep effing saying that. He needs to go over to SmackDown and and we need to see what The Fiend can do by himself with the Universal Championship over on Raw. See what kind of feuds we can get him going. And I think the landscape in WWE is about to change a ton, guys. We're about to have The Fiend as Universal Champion. I think Seth Rollins gets drafted over to SmackDown. We have the draft coming up next Friday. We have SmackDown over on Fox, AEW on Wednesday nights, NXT getting Finn Balor over there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm very excited for it. I just hope it can all deliver and we have a good time with it. But Bray Wyatt, I think, is going to take over the Universal Championship and hopefully he can get a, a reign that actually means something, unlike he did in 2016 with the WWE Championship, and he can, you know, deliver well, have some good reigns, and have The Fiend go on for a while. Maybe maybe finally lose at WrestleMania or something. I'm not sure exactly what they're thinking. If I was fantasy booking it, I would have Finn Balor coming out the Royal Rumble. Like, you know, he, he's been on NXT for a while now. Comes out at the Royal Rumble and wins the Royal Rumble, goes on to challenge The, the Fiend, beats The Fiend as the Demon, and then wins back the Universal Championship that he never lost lost when he had to give it away back when he came up to Raw. That would be my way of fantasy booking it. I think that'd be really John Brown nice, but you know, this is WWE so what do I know? But that pretty much does it for all the matches on the card, man. I mean, really, really don't know what else to say. Maybe I can get into some matches that we may see and tell you guys about them. I mean, I guess I can do that real quick for you guys, but that is what I'm going with with The Fiend and Seth Rollins. I think The Fiend will capture the Universal Championship from Rollins. Alright guys, so getting into some matches that we could possibly see. Again, I'm just spitballing here. These are just some things that I can see happening. Charlotte and Bayley, you guys know that Charlotte did pin Bayley in the tag team matchup that took place on Fox on SmackDown last night. So I can definitely see them adding a SmackDown Live Women's Championship match. And I think if that took place, I think that Charlotte would win the championship and they would send Bayley over to Raw with Sasha so they can continue their little storyline they got going on. And then you could bring Charlotte over to SmackDown with Becky and she would be the champion and that is where you would get that feud. AJ Styles I mean, who's the number one contender? He's beaten Cedric so many times. He ha he's beaten Ricochet so many times. I really don't know who you could add, but you could have somebody with AJ Styles. Rusev and Bobby Lashley, I think that's a matchup you could throw in if you wanted to, but it seems like we probably need another week or two before that matchup is announced. You know, build some more storyline on that. Shinsuke Nakamura in the Intercontinental Championship. Mustafa Ali would be a really good challenger for that or Andrade, but I don't think that, you know, again, we don't have the time for that. And I'm sorry if I'm mixing up brands and superstars to take on each other, but the wildcard rule has really effed up everybody ever since they brought that on and thank god they're ending that with the wwe draft that we have coming up next friday really looking forward to that so we can put an end to this nonsense and have a true dread freaking brand split man so i'm really hyped for that but shinsuke could possibly have a matchup again i don't know who the hell he would fight but then you have the war raiders maybe taking on bobby Roode and dolph ziggler that would probably be a matchup as well i mean it's really tough to say guys i mean there's so many matches you could say but then again they don't have much storyline but that hasn't stopped them in the past and then you have drew gulak and leo rush fighting on NXT for the Cruiserweight Championship, so I think the Cruiserweight Championship could be done being defended on main pay-per-views. That could legitimately be a thing because they put all the 205 Live superstars over on NXT now, and that is a main championship on NXT now is the Cruiserweight title, so they may make, you know, they, they may be done with Cruiserweight Championship matches 
for the main roster. But I really don't know what else to say, guys. I mean, I covered all the matches. Again, if they do announce some of these matches that you've seen here or they announce any other matches, I will put them in the comment section below and pin it so you guys can check those out. And one last match that you guys could possibly see, which I don't think they'll show, but this is another matchup that we could see is Brock Lesnar taking on Kofi or maybe Kane Velasquez will show up and we could have a, a stare down or a fight that breaks out or Tyson Fury and Braun Strowman could end up getting face to face at this show. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't know what you guys thought about SmackDown, but I wasn't a big fan of the ending. You know, it's a solid show up until the main event. You know, all that Kane Velasquez stuff with Kofi losing in two seconds. It was really just sad to see. And, you know, Kofi was built up so well over six months and he loses on one at five in like three seconds. So I, I'm not sure what to say, but uh, that is going to do it for my Hell in a Cell predictions, guys. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. I did my best to kind of give you some matches that might show up on the card. But uh, at this point, there's only three and we've covered that and we've done everything I know to do. So if they do, again, announce some matches, I will plug them in the comment section below and predict them for you guys. But that is going to do it for today's video. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.